Hey everyone, if you've watched my previous video when I built Thanos, my Plex Media server, it's still alive and quite happy inside here. But I also have this one use spot available right here. I think it's time for Thanos to adopt his first daughter. I am happy to present to you Nebula. This will be the one U server that will go right above Thanos. This is his first daughter, supposedly. So basically what we're gonna to build today is a one U low powered server that doesn't suck a lot of power and will be running 24 seven that I don't have to play with. And I can sit there and play with Thanos all I want, turn it on, turn it off, try different hardware and everything else. This one is just meant to run mission critical information and processes. So that's what we're gonna to do today. It is a super micro S CSE 813 with 350 watt power supply. I bought this for about $70 used off of Amazon Marketplace. And I expected to only get just the case. I'm surprised I even got the rails with it. Um, the four trays and the power supply, that's it. It also has here where the optical disk drive goes, it's a Chembro insert that gives you a two and a half inch slot. It's missing the hot swap bay, but it's still usable. And honestly, I'm not worried about missing the hot swap tray for this because it's not an original part. The original part is these four hot swap trays right here and they came included with it. Also that came included with it, surprisingly, was this motherboard. This is an X9 SCL, and it came with the aluminum heatsink. It did not originally have a processor in there, but I threw an old Pentium that does fit with this just so the pins won't get messed up for the time being. So, the only problem is I wanted the X9 SCL F. I already had that in my mind that I was going to buy that motherboard before I even ordered this and found that I almost had it. The other thing I wanted to play with this system is I've never played with IPMI. So the Dash F is the exact same motherboard as this, except that it also adds IPMI support. So if we open her up, we look inside and let's get in a little closer. Now I've already put in the X9 SCL dash F motherboard and reuse the riser. The riser was also included with this. So it was a very good deal for $70 used. I can't complain whatsoever. So I bought this motherboard. I also installed a Xeon E3 1220L V2 CPU. This is a 17 watt TDB dual core quad thread CPU. Nice and low power for the type of workload that we're gonna be putting into it. Now, adding in with it, we're also gonna be adding in two eight gig sticks of DDR3, 1600 megahertz, unbuffered. This doesn't handle registered RAM, this motherboard and this CPU combo. It has to be unregistered, which unfortunately is a little more expensive than registered regular server memory, but it works perfectly fine. So after 16 gigabytes of memory, for surveillance camera storage, we're going to be using a Samsung PM963 960 gigabyte enterprise grade NVMe drive. That's a mouthful. I've also mounted it on a low riser. 1U risers specifically made for NVMe and 1U. So this way it should fit right behind here. Perfect. Now for the cache drive, since I will be also running Unraid on this unit as well, I will be using one of my extra Samsung 970 Evo 250 gigabyte NVMe drives on a regular expander. Now for the Unraid boot drive, 
We're going to be using a regular no-name USB 2.0 16GB flash drive. And I've taken the plastic casing off of it so this way it stays cool a little bit better. But we can't use it just like this on the internal USB 2 because it's just a little too high this way. So, for a few bucks on Amazon, you can get these nice little USB right angle adapters, USB 2, USB 3, doesn't matter. And it works perfectly if you just plug it on in. And it sits perfectly fine right there. Okay, let's get the heat sink on. Now the previous owner of this server was originally running the four hot swap bays with a SAS connector. Now since I'm trying to save as much power as possible, I opted not to put a SAS adapter in here and run these, but instead just use the built on SATA ports. So for about $12, I got the original SAS cables that come with this. So let's install these real quick. Bend these on down. And we'll bring the front mounted serial port back over here. Now that we've got everything tucked in and reconnect that. That works nicely. And for right now, we're going to start with the first bay and we're going to put a 10 terabyte hard drive in there because I'm also going to be running a storage node with this server. So, so let's go ahead and close it up and put it in the rack. And in the rack she goes. Now I did have to remove the rack handles here because otherwise it would not close because they stick out even further than this. So no big deal. It's not like I'm going to be playing with her a lot. Now she's home. Okay, so let's give it some network. Let's plug in the IPMI. And finally, let's give it some power. If I could see what I was doing. Oh. Now she's awake and alive, and I also had the fans turned down to 30% since we're using a very low-powered CPU, so we don't need them to sound like a true data center server cabinet. So with her getting up and running, let's go to the desktop now. So now that we have Nebula in the rack, powered up, and I've also bought and spun up a new copy of Unraid for her, let's go ahead and take a look. Now she's configured. And you can see I have a basic registration on it because I don't think I'm ever going to really use more than six drives total in here. Uh, the motherboard, you can see Supermicro X9 SCL. It doesn't show the dash F part, but that's okay. Um, the load on the CPU is about 20% on average. We're only running 100 degrees usually at that load. And that's with the fans ramped down to 30% of their speed normally. Now, if it does kick up the 60-70% load, you will hear the fans ramp up a little bit. But here we go. Intel Xeon E3 1220L V2 at 2.3 gigahertz. The RAM, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 single bit ECC. With everything running that's supposed to be doing, we're only using about 4 gigs. I'm kind of wondering if I should yank out one of those dims to save an extra 3 or 4 watts or just leave it in. I'll let you guys give me an idea down in the comments and see what you think because I'm going to mull over it for a little bit. Uh, up here you can see the dockers I'm running, two Cloudflare instances that update my IP address with my uh, website address, my Heimdall which is my basically my home page, NetData, 
And here's one of the two main reasons I spun up this server to play with is for a storage node. I need 24-7 operation for this, otherwise I'll get booted from it. So that's running on the array itself. That's all the array is being used for is for storage node. I also have my Unify controller running on here. So this way I have historical data. Even though you don't have to keep it running, that's why I run it, so I can keep historical data. And here's the other main reason I spun this one up, because I wanted to take it off of Thanos and have it separate. Here is ZoneMinder, which is a security camera software. And with that running, it usually uses about 12 to 16 percent on average. If we let it load up here, yeah, see, right here, 15 and a half percent on average. She'll fluctuate a little bit here and there, but that's the most load on this whole system. And believe it or not, that's even with motion detection turned on for all three cameras that it is currently capturing. So that's really good on a slow, low power processor. Can't beat it. Uh, let's go back to the dashboard. I even have the four fans. That's 30% throttle. It's around 5,500 RPM on those four little 40 millimeter fans. It's about 12,000 RPMs if it goes up to 100%. Um, here is your IPMI information. Now, I've selected only a few of them to be showed up, but this is being read directly from the IPMI on the motherboard. So that's snazzy. And if we just take a quick look at the dashboard, here's the CPU usage for the 1220L. And we barely max out at 3.3 on a few little peaks, but otherwise she's running really conservatively. If I go up to system overview, see we're running around 15 to 20%, practically no RAM used, only a quarter of it. And most of this inbound is just the uh, security cameras. And it does a little bit of write every once in a while to the array or to the NVMe drives. And the final thing to show you, I also have both servers plugged into power meters that are on my smart home system. As you can see, Thanos isn't doing anything right now. That's actually his idle. There's only one drive active. Everything else is on standby, and he's doing practically nothing. So that is his idle uh, wattage. Now, for Nebula, 51 is its running wattage. That's about what she'll pull when she's doing her work right now. If I shut everything down and just let it idle, she will go down to about 27 to almost 30 watts. I've seen it peak close to 60 when it was doing the parity build, when I put the second disc in after I racked her, which just finished earlier today. And that's about the closest I got to a peak on it. But otherwise, she will normally run right around 50 watts. It'll probably be about 60 watts when I finally put in the other two drives because I still have two hot swap bays available. Uh, but that will be further down the road if, in fact, storage node does fill up the first 10 terabyte drive. Okay, so there's only one little final thing that we need to add to this, and yes, it is sticker time. I already got the one for the 10th Gen Core i7 that Thanos down below here is using, but since now I also have a Xeon processor, yep, I just got a nice little Xeon inside sticker. So let's put that on. There we go. Now we have a 10th Gen Core i7 and we also have a Xeon. So if you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. It's okay. You can be truthful if you didn't like it. Please subscribe, smash that stupid little bell into the corner, and share this wherever you deem it worthy to be shared. And I will see you in the next video.